Hi guys! So today I wanted to talk a little bit about different types of buckles that I offer and what types of cinches I'll tie on those types of buckles and what types I won't. Um, mainly today I'm kind of going to talk a little bit more about ropers. Uh, I like the roper because they, they fit a horse that's a little harder to fit in the girth area. Um, if you if you're riding a full rigged saddle, so that means your rigging's all the way forward. Um, it can sometimes sit a little high on them horses, and those straight cinches might roll a little bit. Um, whereas a roper, they're a little bit thinner at the buckle, so they um, they fit a full rigged saddle better. Um, and I've got I've got several cinches sitting here to show you guys. Um, first one, obviously, is a roper. Um, as you can see right through here, like this is quite a bit smaller than on my straight cinch, which is kind of hard to see, but, um, that straight cinch is quite a bit further out. Um, I just measured these, this measures three inches across and this measures five. Um, so you can imagine once these get up in the armpit of this horse, they kind of want to bend a little bit. So that's why these cinches are a little bit better for um, saddles that aren't full rigged, or if you're rigging your saddle back a little further, um, which I mean a lot of people do. Like you know, you should set your saddle back so that it, your tree's not interfering with your horse's scapula as it moves. Um, anyways, I build a lot of these cinches, um, and they work for a lot of people. A lot of people really like these buckles. And I have seen recently an uptick in people building ropers on these buckles, which is fine. Like they can do whatever they want. My personal preference, I will not r build a roper on this type of buckle um, unless it's a tied roper. I will not do a woven roper. Um, and this is why. So you've got all this buckle sticking out here and here you got this little tiny neck. Um, I just measured this as well. This is three inches. Same as this. Okay. Um, the thing that I like better is this one. More of the buckle is covered than on this one. Now on my tied ropers, I'll have knots going all the way up the sides. And then you'll have knots right here as well. So it gives it that tied look. Um, and you still get the benefits of a roper, uh, which is, you know, it's dispersing more pressure across a wider area, more strands, less pressure, that sort of thing. Um, now, with that being said, I know people do like those round buckles. Um, I do as well. Uh, I built this cinch the other day for a mare of mine that is fairly hard to fit. Um, this is a horsehair cinch that I tie-dyed. And um, my little sorrel mare is just really hard in the girth area to fit. She's got really springy ribs. Um, these round buckles seem to fit her better. I was riding her in another horsehair cinch with these three inch buckles on her. Um, and they worked. They just, they just looked uncomfortable um, the way they sat on her. And I know when we first started riding her, um, after my maternity leave, she was pretty soft and um, she got a little sore around the girth area because of these buckles because they are so wide on her. Like I said, she's got a really little girth area. So for her, I usually choose to ride her in a roper, which there again, three inch buckles, like still just a little too much. Um, so I got these little pony buckles for her. Um, and I haven't got to try it out yet, but I feel like this is going to fit better than this one did. As you can see, the difference in size there. It's a little narrower for her, um, but it's still this horsehair I measured. <laughs> it's three inches across, just the same as a roper neck would be. It's just a smaller buckle to help her um, be more comfortable. Um, and this is kind of, it's like a modified cutter roper kind of deal. I didn't spread it out as wide as it would go. I had it spread um, like a roper. It was very wide at the middle, but I was more going for the cutter type 
um, cinch because like I said, she's got such a little area to fit that cinch in. Um, so I also put this little extra weave in there so that when it came out of these weaves, it stayed straight and that in hopes will go behind her elbow. And so it'll keep it from bunching up or uh, wrinkling behind her elbow. So it, it's, I'm keeping that same diameter and then it flares out in the center to kind of um, display some of the pressure and the tension. Um, and this cinch, I mean, it's just as wide as a straight cinch is. Um, it's five, five inches in the center. Um, so it, it may look a little small and it may look um, like it, it probably won't be comfortable, but I think for my mare and uh, you know, I've rode her quite a bit and I know her quite well. I think this is going to be the best fit for her. Um, there again, um, I want to touch back on these. I just whipped this out really quick for you guys to see. Uh, my other thing with this buckle is this isn't real stable. Like you can see how it, it rolls and it just, they don't look good to me when you get you know, you're putting all this time and effort into a cinch to put it on buckles like that. Um, it, it just doesn't work out. Um, I would suggest if somebody wanted to do a roper on round rings like this, get them without the bar in the middle because that bar is meant to tie something on um, if you're not doing a straight cinch. This area is meant to cover um, and make it, you know, stable so that um, it's covered while you're riding as opposed to having more exposed buckle. Um, anyways, those are just my opinions and, um, I figured I'd show you guys some of the different things that I offer and why I do things and tie certain cinches on the way that I do. Uh, hopefully that this was helpful for somebody. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, I'll put my email in the comments or on the description of this video and then um, or you guys can find me on Facebook or Instagram or check out my website at crossincinches.com. Thanks guys.